Brazil does a lot of things very well. But beaches are perhaps what the country does best. In fact, spending the day on a beach in Brazil will spoil you for life. You can go anywhere you want on the planet, and though you might find strips of sand that are as beautiful or even more beautiful than the beaches in Brazil, the experience just isn't going to be as good. I tried to explain why, but if you're listening to this podcast, I think you already know exactly what I'm talking about. The beach is often referred to as the most democratic place in Brazil. However much money you have, wherever you come from, whatever your colour of skin, and even whatever type of music you like to listen to, in Brazil, the beach belongs to you, just as much as it belongs to everyone else. But a bill currently pending in Brazil's Senate could be about to put all of that at risk. Or will it? And that's what we're going to discuss this week. I'm Ewan Marshall, Deputy Editor of The Brazilian Report, and this is Explaining Brazil. If you like Explaining Brazil, you should subscribe to our website, The Brazilian Report, which is the journalistic engine behind this podcast. You can also go the extra mile and make a donation to our newsroom, buying a coffee for one of our journalists, because God knows reporters live off of coffee. And you can also subscribe to our Buy Me A Coffee fan page, pledging a monthly contribution to our newsroom in exchange for exclusive content that you won't find anywhere else. Our Buy Me A Coffee subscribers are Wild Rice, Jacira de Oliveira, Carson Allen, Gabriel Luca, Andrei Novoseltsev, Pan Ludwig, Leslie Seal, Mark Hillary, Louise Renz, Erwan Menais, Aaron Berger, Kars Vriesvik, Alistair Townsend, Milo Renacido, Peter Abramson, David Dixon, Jose Ozzy Stankovic, Emerging Market Muser, Anna Lund, Peter Suffren, Anderson Da Silva, and someone who chose to remain anonymous. And our Buy Me A Coffee members come from all over the world, so please, if we're butchering the pronunciation of your name, please send us an email. If you too believe in the importance of independent journalism, and if you want to hear your name on our podcast, go to buymeacoffee.com slash Brazilian Report and subscribe to one of our membership levels. Click on buymeacoffee.com slash Brazilian Report to find out more. To discuss whether the freedom of Brazil's beaches is at risk, I'm delighted to welcome back our Brazilian correspondent, Sede Silva. Hi, Sede. How you doing? Uh, I'm great, Ewan. Thank you for having me. So, Sede, tell us about this constitutional amendment proposal. There are many groups calling it the privatised beaches bill, but that's not exactly accurate, is it? Tell us what this bill would change if it were approved. Okay, so in Brazil, we have something called marine land, and that's marine with a lowercase m. Um, some people think that it's Navy land uh, belonging to the Navy. That's not actually true. So the term mar- marine land uh, refers to an area that borders the sea and is 33 meters from the high tide mean line in, 18, in 1831. The high tide mean line is the average high tide in a given period. And the reference for marine land in Brazil was calculated uh, back in 1831 during the Brazilian Empire. This means that beaches, dunes, mangroves, and coastal islands within this strip of 33 meters are considered marine land. So this constitutional amendment refers to marine land, uh, which also coincides with uh, beaches, but it's not exactly uh, beaches only, but also refers to uh, things like dunes, mangroves, and coastal islands. So yeah, we're not talking about the beaches themselves, but the strip of land slightly inland. Beaches wouldn't be able to be privatized, for example, but maybe access to them could, right? Precisely. And what this bill, uh, what this constitutional amendment uh, aims to do is it, it uh, the, the defenders, the supporters say it does not privatize the beaches per se, but it will allow uh, the private occupation and the private use of marine land Uh, Most notably, the marine land that is already occupied by places such as rich people with beach houses and will also allow uh, local governments, state and city governments that own this land um, to uh, have public biddings for people to use uh, them privately. The bill had already been approved by the lower house and it didn't cause anywhere near as much fuss as it has now. Uh, of course, that was under the Bolsonaro government. Say, so they tell us who's supporting this bill and what benefits they say it would bring. 
Yeah, so one of the reasons that the bill didn't cause much controversy in early 2022 when it passed the House was because of the way that House Speaker Arthur Lira uh, conducts business. Um, there are many bills or, or constitutional amendments that are approved in the House under Arthur Lira, who is still the House Speaker, which are approved very fast without a debate on the House floor. And in early 22, of course, many people were uh, with an eye on the elections uh, back then. So this is the reason why the bill passed the House um, without uh, equivalent controversy uh, back then. So this bill is supported by people such as Senator Flavio Bolsonaro. He's the eldest son of former President Jair Bolsonaro. And the Bolsonaro clan uh, is a long supporter and a long advocate of uh, using beaches for tourism and of reducing environmental laws and environmental restrictions in order to have more private businesses and private homes uh, on coastal land. Uh, Flavio Bolsonaro is the rapporteur in the Senate of this bill, which means he is not the author, he's not the original person behind the bill which passed the House, but he's the one in charge of, uh, in the Senate of drafting the final text that senators got to approve. And Senator Flavio Bolsonaro decided not to change the text that was approved in the House, to keep the text as it is, which is an indication that he would like the bill approved as soon as possible. Because if he had made any changes, then the amendment would have to go back to the House if it clears the Senate. So Senator Flavio Bolsonaro is trying to frame this as a, as a tax issue. Uh, he's trying to convince the public that the government and local governments stand to benefit uh, be, yeah, because of the money that public bids would go to the beaches that would um, be acquired for private use, and also because of the uh, businesses and so on that would go on this um, marine land, and these businesses would pay more taxes. But in fact, the Bolsonaro clan and a lot of people, they have their own private interests in this issue. Uh, Jair Bolsonaro himself, Flavio's father, is a long advocate of making the region of Angra dos Reis in the state of Rio de Janeiro, uh, Brazil's Cancun. And Cancun uh, is a place where uh, there, there's a lot of business going on and you need l to loosen environmental restrictions uh, to build a lot of these things on marine land. Interesting. Uh, we'll come back to the interests of the Bolsonaro family and all of this soon. But first, what about those who argue against the bill? What are they saying? So one of the, 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 the things is that uh, beaches are taken to be uh, public property. But in fact, there are thousands of properties uh, in Brazil, in, in coastal places, where um, the, the rich people or the owners of these businesses will make efforts to... Uh, have this these beaches be basically private. So these this places will have uh, walls or there will be some access restrictions on these gated communities uh, in order to make the beaches as most as possible for only the residents or the tourists themselves. So we are talking about the privatization of land uh, that should be public, even though it is not privatization per se, it is de facto, it is in fact uh, um, allowing for the private use of marine land, which includes uh, the beaches. And the second thing people are arguing is about the environmental damages. So um, beaches and, and marine land uh, is critically important, especially in a time when uh, the sea levels are rising. And in places just such as mangroves and coastal islands, there's important vegetation uh, in order to avoid other climate problems and other environmental problems in the future. So this bill would um, allow or make it easier to have uh, development and to have a degradation of the environment in these places in order or to make them more financially attractive. Yeah, the environmental aspect is an important one, as of course on Wednesday when this podcast airs, it will be World Environment Day. Uh, what are the potential environmental repercussions of this measure? I mean, we've just seen the floods in Rio Grande do Sul, so should we be worried about the potential of the state having even less control over its coastal lands? Yeah, um, so there's an important climate scientist in Brazil, Ricardo Galvão. Uh, he has recently spoken against this bill, 
And one of the reasons is precisely because of how the marine land um, is so important for the climate and, for, and to avoid uh, the worsening of the climate crisis. So you, you've got a lot of environmentalists uh, speaking against this bill because uh, it would uh, make, it, make it easier, open a new pathway for further environmental degradation, uh, especially in some places which are uh, environmentally very sensitive, uh, places with coral reefs, places with certain species of fish, um, uh, mangroves, uh, some, some um, environments that are important to avoid floods and so on. Uh, so there is a, a huge environmental concern here. So let's go back to the Bolsonaro family and this project to turn Angrado's haze into a Brazilian Cancun. Something you raised as potentially being connected to this beach bill is another piece of proposed legislation that would legalize casinos in Brazil. Could you tell us a bit more about that and why it may be connected? Yeah, so in the recent public hearing at the Senate's uh, Constitution and Justice Committee, this topic of casinos was not uh, spoken about, but I argue that they are very much connected and because there are uh, lots of reasons uh, for us to understand that they are connected. Uh, first, uh, the, this constitutional amendment regarding the use of marine land, which in Brazil is being called the, the Beaches Amendment, and the legalization of casinos, they both passed the House in early 2022 uh, in less than 48 hours. So you had the constitutional amendment about beaches uh, was approved uh, in February 2022, and the legalization of casinos passed the House in the early hours of February 24, while Russia was invading Ukraine, by the way, so it was on the same night. So these both things, uh, the privatization of beaches and casinos, they passed the House in early 2022 uh, in, a, in a very short uh, interval of time. This is also the reason, Ewan, why it is so important to keep an eye on this bill, because uh, constitutional amendments cannot be vetoed by the president. And this, this, this amendment about beaches has already cleared the House, so it, all it takes is a vote in the Senate floor for it to become a law. There is nothing else that uh, the, the, the government could do to stop it, uh, unless an appeal, of course, to the Supreme Court. But legally in Congress, the president could not veto it, and so it has already cleared the House in early 2022. All it takes is a vote in the Senate. So back to casinos. So first, the amendment about beaches and the legalization of casinos, they both cleared the house in early 22 in a very short uh, term of time. The second thing is the rapporteur for the amendment in the beaches is Senator Flávio Bolsonaro. And in the Senate, the rapporteur for the legalization of casinos is Senator Irajá. Both Flávio Bolsonaro and Senator Irajá, they traveled to the United States in early 2020 just before the pandemic, they traveled to Las Vegas and Miami, and there they met uh, with the late casino magnet Sheldon Adelson. And they were there to discuss casinos and how to bring casinos and casino companies to Brazil. And the reason we know this is because there's uh, a businessman from El Salvador uh, with a long history in Las Vegas named Mario Guardado, and he's an open activist for the legalization of casinos in Brazil for a long time. And he was the one to come out on Instagram and say that Flavio Bolsonaro and Senator Irajá were there in Las Vegas to discuss uh, casinos and how to bring casinos to Brazil. And the, the thing about Cancun and these other role models that the Bolsonaro clan and other people in Brazil uh, which, who are in favor of legalizing casinos, they're, they're talking about uh, casinos as part of resorts, as opposed to casinos in the middle of the city but casinos as tourist things uh, in, in, in resorts and especially in coastal areas. There's a congressman named Marcelo Álvaro Antonio. He used to be the tourism minister in the Bolsonaro administration. And early in the Bolsonaro administration, Marcelo Álvaro Antonio, who was then the minister, he spoke in favor of casino resorts in Brazil. And so you, you had an official high up in the Bolsonaro administration at the time also defending uh, the legalization of casinos. So for me, all the signs are there that uh, casinos and the topic of beaches are related. The hot topic right now is the, the thing about the, the beaches, but at the same time, uh, twice in recent weeks, 
the Senate, uh, one of the Senate's committees had in, in, in the floor, had in its agenda, the other legislation, the draft bill to legalize casinos in Brazil. It has not been taken to a vote yet, but it could be taken to a vote anytime now. And of course, if the amendment to have private use of marine land is approved, you're going to make casinos in Brazil much more financially attractive. So, for instance, for someone looking to build a big beach resort in Brazil with a casino, both of these bills would be very important, right? Yes, uh, and, and they, they are very uh, related. And we know this at least since early 2022, when the both proposals, beach and casinos, uh, were approved in a very short uh, interval of time. Now, this beach bill has caused quite a stir in Brazil. Uh, Senate President Rodrigo Pacheco has put the brakes on things a bit, coming out and saying that it's perhaps not quite as much of a Senate priority as it was made out to be, saying that it will require a broad debate, which signals that the bill is not going to have that lightning quick approval that it got in the lower house. So what are the next steps for the proposal? So the, the, the first step is to, to have it in a, in a vote at the Senate Constitution and Justice Committee. And if it, if it doesn't uh, require discussions in other committees, it would go to the Senate floor. Senate President Rodrigo Pacheco, obviously, uh, by saying that, uh, he's just saying that uh, he's not going to publicly take a stance on the issue. And so he's going to uh, let uh, a majority of senators decide. Uh, the, the thing about this is um, because the president cannot veto constitutional amendments, this bill, once it clears the Senate floor, it's already approved. And all that would be left for the Luiz Inácio Lula administration, which is against the bill, uh, would be an appeal to the Supreme Court. But in Congress, they couldn't do uh, anything else because the rapporteur is in favor. The rapporteur has already presented a draft that does not change the tax. So if it voted, it would not go back to the House. So in Congress, there's very little uh, left to do for the Lula administration to block this proposal. Uh, so that is why the stakes are so high in this issue. Okay, so Dave, thanks very much for that. I'm sure you'll be keeping an eye on this for us and we'll hear from you very soon. Thank you, Ewan. See you next time. If you like Explaining Brazil, please give us a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. Or better yet, subscribe to The Brazilian Report, the journalistic engine behind this podcast. We have a subscription-based business model and your memberships fuel our journalism and keep us going and growing and our work has been recognized for its quality. We have won several international awards. In April 2024, the Brazilian Report was named the best news website in the Americas for a smaller local newsroom by the World Association of News Publishers, Juan Ifra. And more recently, the Brazilian Report won the best story at the 2024 DigiDay Media Awards for its story on the hacking attempt of one of Brazil's Supreme Court justices. And to continue doing this work, we need your support. So please go to brazilian.report. I'm Ewan Marshall. Thanks for listening and Explaining Brazil will be back next week.